How are we getting on guys? It's Ed from Sproggy Motorsport and we are finally back with another video. Uh, today this should be a pretty decent video, it's one that I've wanted to do for a little while now but um, with a mixture of things and getting the car to a certain point we just haven't got a chance to uh, do it yet but we've got a decent day today, not a lot on, we're, we're in a decent location today so um, this should be a good one. Now before we crack into the video I have to address a few things quick, firstly it is like 30 degrees today so if you catch me sweating and panting and looking rough then whatever is what it is secondly i have the worst hay fever ever so if i need to blow my nose or whatever don't watch that and thirdly uh what was the third one um oh yeah thirdly glasses broken it's really bright outside i don't fancy squinting all video so it is what it is and uh, lastly, the car's done a few miles since it was clean, so it's not immaculate. So, with that all being said, let's crack into today's video. Now then, subject to today's video, the Mark 8 GTI Club Sport, and more specifically, everything, not maybe not in massive detail, but everything I can think of that people might want to know about having a tuned Mark 8 Golf, uh, especially a Club Sport rather than a Golf R, because it's front wheel drive and uh, just answering loads of little questions that I've thought of and uh, just giving you a little little idea of what it's like to live with, what it's like to drive, what, how it sounds, just loads of little bits and bobs really. Um, I can't actually see the screen. I've got a new camera so hopefully the, um, the actual quality of the video is pretty decent but I can't actually see the screen with my glasses on for some reason. So uh, if the frame's a bit off then uh, <laughs> is what it is. But um without further ado let's have a little look round the Sprogly Motorsport Mark 8 GTI Club Sport Are we recording? <laughs> right everyone, we just jumped in the car and uh, we're gonna go for a little drive now. I should look there instead of there. And we're gonna go for a little drive now and uh, talk about a few things through the car and do some rips and have a good time and yeah, hopefully make a good video of it. Obviously I'm not gonna be filming myself while I'm driving so I've got Connie with me who's gonna be doing the filming bit. Uh, so yeah, let's go for a rip. My hay fever. Oh, I'm fucking recording. Right, hi guys. Um, so it's as Connie. 
questions with Connie. It is questions with Connie. I love a question. So I've got a few questions here to ask Ed. Again, you're going to have to like fully excuse the state of me slash Ed. Um, because I'm hot and bothered. Anyway, so I also do have a top on, by the way. It's just like one of the off the shoulder ones, if anyone, yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> right, so Ed, these are, okay. Right, so performance figures on the Golf. Right, so the performance of the car, as it stands now, uh, the car is uh, stage three. It's got um, the smaller of the two, hybrid turbos from Litco which is the L508 and with the standard uh, back box we are making 520 horsepower and I think just under 480 foot pound of torque which is pretty decent it could be it could be a lot more but I think uh, from what I've seen from uh, other companies with Golf R's, they were also kind of pushing the platform. Even with the bigger turbos, they're kind of limited on fuel by around the five, 560 mark, so I've seen. And there's not currently a fuel pump that's available on the market to help with that. So we're not we're not a million miles away from from uh, other limiting factors anyway. And the important thing to bear in mind with this is. Because it's a club sport, we've got front wheel drive, so it gets to a point where you're just chasing numbers. Like at the end of the day, this car is built to go fast around a racetrack, not to put down the best draggy times in the world. I don't really have any interest in that. Um, so, so yeah. But that being said, 520 horsepower goes pretty well. Front wheel drive. What's the point in all that power here? You ask. This car puts down the power so well, it's not even funny. Um, it's currently got the track wheels and tyres on because we've got we've gone to a few shows recently. Um, so we've got uh, Nankang AR ones on it at the minute, and with the decent weather we've had recently, we've got very little traction issues. I mean, anything from 20, 30 mile an hour onwards, a little bit of wheel spin, and then off we go. Like it's really not a problem. So uh, yeah, that's that's the uh, straight line performance of the car. So for anyone that's wondering, uh, draggy times. From what I've been told, there is a little bit of a knack to getting a decent draggy time, and I'm not really interested in it enough to learn the tricks to try and you know shave a couple of tenths of a second here and there. I I did buy one. I've not really used it much, um, especially since the car's been set up as it is now. I did one. 100 to 200 kilometer time the other day on the way to work because we got a straight on the way to work and it did a 7.5 from what i understand that's not bad it's also not amazing either um if i kept doing back-to-back -back runs or had a more de ideal road because the road i was doing it on is kind of bumpy maybe it could be quicker maybe it won't maybe that's how it is now either way i'm not really that bothered um but it gives you a rough idea of sort of how capable the car is in terms of straight line next question what is it like to drive so what's the power like what's your handling like uh what are the brakes like so what's it like to drive um the first thing i'd say about what it's like to drive which might interest some people but might not interest others is for the most part it drives more or less like the car did when it was standard i know with this kind of performance a lot of people would expect it to be like uh, a massive pain in the ass to drive every day or daily about or this that and the other but the reality is it's just not it drives more or less like it did in standard form I mean, I'm not putting my foot flat to the floor everywhere because um, that you're kind of enticing wheel spin and you know lariness there. But pulling around, you can drive it like a normal car. It's not trying to bite your head off. It's very smooth to drive. Where I normally drive it around in comfort, so you've got a fairly subtle throttle response. So the the, the not the car's not like a on-off switch. So it's probably worth noting at this point we're on a fairly bumpy road and. I've got a bit of a dodgy seat base at the minute, which is what that squeaking is. And uh, it's probably a massive pain in the arse as it is for us, but I can't really do anything about it, so it is what it is there. Handling wise, yeah. how, do you find, how do you find the car? How do you find handles? From a handling perspective, uh, I'd say that's probably where the car is a little bit more compromised compared to a standard car. 
Um, the car's currently got B14 coilovers and uh, 034 Motorsport Cambo top mounts. As far as crashiness goes, it's not too bad. Uh, I've definitely been in worse cars. It is a little bit crashier than stock, but that being said, the Club Sport has quite a firm ride uh, to begin with, so in terms of ride quality, it's really not that much worse. Where you do notice a difference though, is because of the extra camber on the front of the car, the car does like to dart about a little bit and it does talk steer a little bit. Although interestingly, the car talk steers less now with all the modifications done and all the performance uh, stuff that we've done to it, it talks steers less now than it did when it was standard. And I put that down to um, the, di the electronic limited slip diff being adjusted or tuned I'm not exactly sure on the ins and outs of it but it's it's been improved to the point where even with the extra camera even with semi slicks driving on a fairly bumpy road is very controllable like when I say anyone could get in and drive this pretty quick I really do mean that Another thing that uh, does differ a little bit with day-to-day -day driving is the gearbox software. Um, now this could be a mixture of it being uh, tuned and also a mixture of it being very um, early in terms of its life cycle. I don't, I don't know if that's the right way of saying it, but essentially what we've got on the car now is uh, TVS Stage 3 gearbox tuning. As far as I'm aware, this is certainly one of the one of the first markets in the country to um, have this gearbox software as it only became available while the car was at Devil Developments having the uh, turbo fitted in the stage 3 software. So it, it's still in its earliest stages. It isn't quite as smooth as it was with the Litco gearbox tuning on. But that being said, what we have now got is proper manual mode, uh, a proper rev limiter. So if you take it up to whatever it is, 7,300 RPM or whatever, it will hit a limiter. It won't auto shift for you like it did, uh, like it did before. The shifts are very aggressive um, in the best possible way. Like you change gears with this thing. If you load it up, it makes a real nice crack on gear changes, which we'll try and get a clip of. say one of the most impressive things to me about how the car drives as a sort of daily driver still even if uh, with this level of tuning is that on a run you can still easily see more than 40 miles to the gallon which with this level of performance is absolutely insane I don't even know how it's possible but either way it's super super impressive so if you're looking to tune your Mark 8 and you're worried about fuel consumption it's just not a concern obviously if you're getting on it it's uh, gonna be a little bit different you know once once we're booting it about the the fuel disappears very very quickly but certainly just pulling around as normal I'd say it's only a little bit less economical than it was when it was completely standard which is super impressive as far as the brakes go they are they're very very good as the car sits now we've got a set of um, TTRS slash Aston Martin Brembo's which lots of people will be very familiar with um, that's part of the uh, two-piece VBT kit that also uses the 362 mil discs uh, we currently got a set of M1155 road pads in which do the job very nicely as an all-round sort of performance road pad. Lots of people could compare it to a DS2500 but I'd say they're a little bit better in my opinion. Overall the car is awesome to drive on the road and the track. In its current setup I've yet to actually get it on a track though because it's only very recently been finalised and even now we're still waiting on a few more bits uh, like cooling products just to make sure it's absolutely spot on when it comes to an track day. But certainly as far as driving it around on the road it is very drivable, very smooth perfectly comfortable most of the year I, I have the rear seats in the back and take my little around in it so it acts as a second daily driver so it, essentially you've got a practical golf with a stupid level of performance that is very fun rewarding and straightforward to drive because Connie's driven the car a few times as well I want to see what you think of how it drives as a second opinion because 
for perspective, Connie's got a Mark 7 GTI Club Sport that in terms of power and setup is very similar to this. But I know from driving hers, it's they're very different. And we'll do we'll probably do a more in-depth comparison video on the two at some point. But certainly from your perspective of driving this, what do you think? So my honest opinion would be, and this is not me being biased at all because anyone that knows me would know like I would be honest. I really, really, really like driving Ed's car. Everything about it, I mean, don't get me wrong, there is there is a few things I prefer about my car, a hundred percent. Uh, quality like being one of them I feel like with the Mark 8 the quality just isn't there um, that's not criticizing like appearance wise or anything like that what it's like to drive um, it's the easiest car in the world to drive you literally I think when you say like a, f a car's like 520 brake people instantly are like oh I bet it's a handful I'll tell you what let's give them an example quickly so just turn the traction control off Let's see how easy it is. We've got 40 miles an hour, traction fully off. Here we go. Piece of cake. That is a well set up car. This is exactly what I mean. Like in um, in Eds, you could you could almost do that with like your like hand on the steering wheel. Like it is just I don't know. Like it it, it really like grips the road. But I think that's down to more of like Ed's setup as well as it being like a really decent car. Like it's got really decent tyres on. Um, you've got really good brake pads. Like it's got Spires tuning. Spires is just incredible and does all of like our cars and stuff setup wise, especially when it's going on track and stuff. This car is an absolute pleasure to drive. It really is. It's just all round a nice car to drive. Um, it's just pleasant, isn't it? It depends what you're into at the end of the day. And I'd say for most newer cars, they're never going to be as exciting and raw to drive as an older car. But if you want a car that you can get, you can have a decent amount of enjoyment driving, you know, like I can take this on a rip and I can have the best time ever driving this car. So I'm definitely not saying it's boring, but it's just, it's so capable in every way. It almost, it, it, it is easy to drive. Like, I mean, obviously there is levels to it. And it's driving a very it, good all round car. Exactly. It's yeah. just, it's perfect. And you know, pretty much everything that we've done to the car has just made it better. Okay, and so what are future plans for your car? Future plans for the car. I'm not gonna be one of those people who goes, oh, you'll have to wait and see. I'll just tell you, because at the end of the day, no one wants to wait and find out. No one probably really cares. As far as the build goes, it is getting towards the end of being completed. It's for, for me and what I wanted out of the car. Certainly performance-wise, um, you know, that that's all the power that I'd ever need more, to be fair. I do plan on uh, sticking a GPF back Scorpion system on it, which will probably net a little bit of horsepower because of how restrictive the back box is. But for me, that's more so for uh, aesthetics. I've got a little bit of a plan with uh, exhaust tips and also the car outside, it, although it doesn't seem that bad in here, it is quite loud and I think for some UK racetracks it will probably be a little bit too loud. So if, I'm, if I stick a resonated system on it, it will just bring the decibels down, down a little bit, which will help with racetracks. As far as handling goes, I really like how the car handles now, but there's always room for improvement and you know, the build signs were always going to be a means to an end because I know they're a great road coilover. Uh, but for the racetrack and you know having something a bit more track focused we can do a bit better than that so we do actually have a set of area motorsport spec YSR coilovers to fit Robert area motorsport has recently got a Mark 8 club sport himself and has confirmed that the suspension on the Mark 7 is exactly the same as the Mark 8 so we've got a set of the um, YSR coilovers on route. I've also got a super pro rear anti-roll bar to put on as well which should help stiffen the back up a bit more and just get really rotating because it is a fairly neutral setup as it is at the minute and um, 
it takes quite a lot of effort to get the back out so uh, that should just help tighten it up a little bit more although I've not had any issues with cooling at all to be fair like oil temperatures have been very reasonable I do have a Bartek oil cooler kit to fit as well as a Airtek upgraded auxiliary radiator again this is more of like a fail safe than a necessity and uh, I don't want to get to a scenario where we're doing a track day on a very hot day like today and three laps in the car starts to get unhappy so that's just preventative measures just to keep it happy and keep the temperatures down. Other than that it's more little aesthetic bits really. Um, I've got I want to get a different diffuser for the back because I think the club sport diffuser is kind of boring. I want the side skirts painted gloss black because they're bump texture on a Mark 8 club sport which makes absolutely no sense considering cars like the R-Line get a gloss black side skirt. I've got a little idea to sort of make a custom air dam for the front splitter to cover up the horrible strut things that the Maxton splitter has because I really don't like that at all. Maybe at some point I'll get a set of wider wheels because uh, with the camera and everything else on the car at the minute it could really do with a 9J wheel now uh, so I'll try and save up for a set of 18 Pro tracks and get some beefier tyres on. That will probably be more or less it to be fair. It's a bit of a statement to say a car's done, maybe it's never really done, but certainly everything that I had anticipated doing since getting the car a couple of years ago, I'll more or less have completed. So yeah, that's, that's the future plans as far as parts go. Okay, so one of the last questions we've got on here is how does it sound? How does it sound? Uh, we're going to keep this nice and easy. I'm going to jump out of the car with the camera, Connie's going to get in the driver's seat and she's going to tear a new one and I'll get some nice sound clips. We've had to switch back to the uh, GoPro because the normal camera died. Um, but yeah, I hope that was a fairly conclusive video of at least little bits and bobs about what it's like um, driving around in the, or driving around in a tuned Mark 8 Golf. Um, if there's any more questions people have, maybe we can make a more in-depth video of certain little things in the future. But uh, yeah, that's about it for us for now. I'm glad we managed to finally get out and make another video and I hope it's all pieced together okay. And uh, yeah, we will catch you in the next one. See ya. <laughs>